Tonight, here in London's Royal Albert Hall, a team of 16 all-star top professional wrestlers are going to be doing battle in that ring. All the big names are here. There's Rollerball Rocco, the man they call public enemy number one, Johnny Saint, the world lightweight champion, even Big Daddy's here, all 24 and a half stone of him, all 60 inches round the waist of him. And there's one name on the bill that is brand new, a young man who has never wrestled professionally in a ring before in his life. He's always watched wrestling from outside those ropes, but tonight he takes a step inside that ring. He's 27, he's a school teacher from Burnley in Lancashire, and for Keith Rawlinson, this is the big time. Grove Methodist Church in Burnley. It's where you'll find Keith and his wife Judy every Sunday. There can't be many organists who, like Keith, find satisfaction in the violence of wrestling and inspiration in the Word of God. I try and live as I think I ought to live, and as it's laid down in the Bible. That's not going to stop me trying to bash hell out of an opponent in a wrestling match. Well, I wonder. I mean, it was St. Matthew who said, what is it? Blessed are the meek and blessed are the merciful. There's oh, nothing am, meek and merciful in wrestling. I am meek, really, and merciful. Um, no, I think, uh, I'm hoping that once I get inside a wrestling ring, uh, I'm hoping a bit of a change will come over me. It's got to. <laughs> There'll be no room for mercy or meekness. Now we're landing. Very good, very good. Rough and ready. That's how Keith describes the kids he teaches. That roughness he lets them work out at the wrestling club he runs. His theory? better to let them fight here than on the streets. Now, that is a submission move. And if you he can teach them a lot of wrestling theory, but he's never wrestled himself. It's still a dream. I've always been a wrestler in my mind. I know that's just fantasy, and I, I want to turn fantasy into fact. What do you mean you've always been a wrestler in your mind? Well, every time I see a wrestling match, I, 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 I am one of the wrestlers. When, I'm, when I sit there, I normally side with, with the goody. And every time the baddie sort of does a foul, I feel it for the wrestler. I feel it just as much as the wrestler does. And so I'm, I am involved, and I, I have been a wrestler. Why? Because you're not a big lad, are you? I don't know. I, I, I must admit, I think it's the violence, actually, which is a dreadful thing to have to say. But I think everybody needs some outlet for, um, to get rid of the pent-up emotions, you know, and all the rest of it. And. Um, I think that uh, I get rid of mine by watching wrestling. So you, you think deep down, <laughs> Keith is a violent lad? Oh, I think he has a violent side, yes, I really do. I think most people probably do. How much acting do you think there is in wrestling? Oh, I think people believe that uh, a lot of it is, is for show. And in fact, I've been speaking to people about what I'm going to do, and they sort of say, oh, well done, it'll be a real laugh, won't it? But I know it's not going to be a real laugh at all, because people do get hurt, no doubt about it. I don't give a damn what the doctor says, he must be there. Mike's Crabtree, top wrestling promoter. He'll promote Keith's fight at the Albert Hall if Keith can prove to him he's got the one thing that all wrestlers must have. Uh, the man's got to have a lot of bottle. Uh, it's a type of courage to be able to go in and dish out the treatment and also take it. To be able to get off the floor when somebody smacks you in the nose and your nose know, starts bleeding. Somebody's got you in an excruciating hold on the floor and you feel that your leg's gonna drop off. And uh, it's being able to fight out of it and get up and have a go. That's bottle. He's going to put Keith into the ring with a professional. He's not looking for skill, he's looking for bottle. What's Keith going to do when he gets into the ring for the first time? Well, I've tried to think about it. It's a bit hard, really. Um, I'm going to try and get the fella over and get him down on the mat. How are you going to do that? Oh, well, I'm going to twist his arm round his... He's not listening, is he? No, right, I'll twist his arm round his seat, and hopefully he'll have to bend himself forward, and then I shall come in front of him, 
my arm round his back, top of his shoulders, and pull Hunt. With a bit of luck, he should go on the map. It's going to be as easy as that. <laughs> well, I think so. Have you heard of something called bottle? Something you drink? No. <laughs> they talk about bottle in the wrestling game. It's sort of courage. Mm. Do, do you think you've got the bottle to go through with this? You can change your mind still. Oh, no, no, I want, I want to do it very, very much. I think when I get in the ring, I think this bottle or whatever you say just might come over me. I hope so. This is what I'm hoping for anyway. So no second thoughts? Oh, no, no. He hasn't seen his opponent yet. Legs as thick as tree trunks and a body like a Sherman tank. Cyanide Sid Cooper. Have you done any combat at all? Not really. None at all? Mm. I see. What we'll do then, Keith, I'll show you what I'd like you to try to do. Mm. And we'll take it step by step, eh? Mm. This man, Cooper, will go on the defence. Yeah. I want you to put him down on the floor. Yeah. Right. Take hold. So I'm pulling down to put his, put his shoulders on the canvas. He's only on the defence, he won't attack you. Now come on, Keith, get your balance, face him straight. Um, you feet up, me, first lesson, Keith, don't try anything you can't do. All right, now get your balance first, get your legs in right position. Now look at him, get your arms up, link up. Now come on, put some bloody yeah. muscle into it, lad. That's the way, that's good, break it. Come on, Cooper, let him get up. On your feet up, lad. Not bad, you're trying. How are you feeling? A bit of breath. A bit of breath. Feel well. Right. I'll get used to it in a minute. It's all right. I want you to try a couple of drop kicks. All right, Keith. What is it you can drop kick his hand? Two feet up in there. Oh, yes. You know what a drop kick? If you've watched it, you know what it's all about. This is what wrestling's about. Oh, I never tried one. Well, go on. Let's have a go. Get up. Go on, get up. Go on, come on. Get up. Come on. Up. Get up. Go on, Keith, have another go. Right, on your feet, up, lad. I think a few of this one, try this one, Keith. Left hand, left hand. All right, let me throw an odd one. Go on, Keith, jump up, lad. <coughs> Are you all right, son? Yeah. Get up, Keith. Come on. One, two, three, four. Now, get your balance, Keith. I've showed you. Look, drop Keith, you me down. Wall. Drop, get me drop on him on the chest. My God, old man, you'll rupture him. You'll rupture him. You'll, you'll rupture him. 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 You'll Get it up, lad. <coughs> this is where all professional wrestlers begin. If they get away with only being sick the first time they get into the ring, it's not a bad start. Turn around, face us. Let's have a look at you. Stand yourself up. Lad. No, that's very important. Oh, you're all right, lad. How do you feel? Oh, <laughs> believe me, you, know, you get these people sitting down at home watching it on the television. Oh, I could do that, but can I swear? You can do what you like. Bloody hard. Honest. These fellows are rough. This man is not starting at the beginning. He's starting six feet under. But I'll tell you now, kid, before we even start, there's a bit of pain with the job. Mm. There's a lot of uncomfortable moments. Mm. And if you can stand these things, yeah. then we have a chance. Yeah. And that's about the top and bottom of it, man. Do you want to change your mind? Not at this stage, no. But it's now or never. No. Keith will need a trainer. Crabtree picks Tally Ho K. He's billed as being almost a gentleman. Unfortunately, his gentlemanly manners are sometimes less than perfect. Tally Ho K has got a reputation for being one of the dirtiest wrestlers in the business. He's also got a reputation for being one of the best trainers. Oh, Keith. This is the man who's going to turn you into a big time wrestler. Tally okay? Well, call me Peter. Tally okay is only what I use in the ring. Call right, Peter, thanks. Right.
Peter, what do you think of him? There he is. Wow. All, all 11 stone of him. He needs a bit of meat on him and a bit of building up, but we'll see what we can do with him anyway. Come on, Peter. Let's get in here. Right? We'll, we'll have to get you so that you know how it all starts. You start with the referee's on, which is that behind the neck. There, that's it. Put that. That's it. So put that on there. That's it. Now, that's the referee's hole, right? Yeah. So if I go like that, I can come underneath and take your arm with me like that. Yeah. Right? Right? You see, look, like that. You come like that and take it. Yeah. Take it with you. Take the arm underneath. Right? right. So that's it. Now you've got there. Yeah. You bring it forward and you've got them there. You're just basically sitting down. Yeah. And then you do it to me, right? Yeah. Like that. Now sit it down. Right. Lesson one, and Keith learns the referee's hold, the back hammer, and even a headlock and overthrow. That's better. The champion started this way, even Johnny Saint, the current world lightweight wrestling champion. Keith admits he finds the training tough, so were Johnny Saint's early days. Very tough. Aye, very tough. Uh, I don't mind admitting that uh, when I first started uh, wrestling, what, I'd, I'd only be 16, uh, there have been occasions when I've walked home from the gymnasium crying. How would you train someone? Break his heart. First of all, plough him in the deck, as we call it. Scurf him. What scurf? Just plough him in the deck, you know. You, there, are, um, there are ways in wrestling that um, it appears that uh, one wrestler's underneath and the other wrestler's on top and it appears that nothing's happening but the man that's underneath if he's a, a, a novice like yourself mm. he can die a thousand times in as many minutes mm. and this is what we call scurfing how much work has he got to do before he can even begin to think about that lovely champion's belt an awful lot an awful lot this belt represents Hours and hours of hard slog, hard training, blood and guts. Keith, it, it's still very much his belt, but just, let's just see if it fits. Put it round you. <laughs> now take a good look at that, because that's as near as you're ever going to get to it. <laughs> oh, sure. How much do you think you weigh, Keith? Uh, about 11 stone. About 11, yeah. What's the truth, Bob? Well, Bob Sweeney, a former wrestler, now runs a chain of health clubs. Half his customers are there to put weight on, half to take it off. No prizes for guessing Keith's problem. Go. It's just about 10 stone, 11 pounds. 10 stone, 11? Yeah. What sort of weight is that for a wrestler? Well, not too good, I'm afraid, Keith, because uh, some of those guys will really bounce you around, so I think you ought to gain at least another 10 pounds. That's what we should be aiming for. So he's working towards what, 12 stone? Uh, yes, round about 12 stone. Okay, we're going to lift the bar above your chest, hold it there, now down to the chest and just push it back. Okay, push, push. That's a good test. We think you should be able to lift 150 pounds if you want to be a professional wrestler, so we certainly need to increase his strength. He puts Keith on what he calls the Olympic diet. It's a high-protein diet of meat, eggs and cheese, and no less than five pints of milk and water. For the next three months, Keith is going to eat this much every day. Then his school dinner, and the protein supplements, potions, and no less than 34 vitamin pills he's going to have to pop. And with that lot inside him, he's going to have to run three miles every day and find time for an hour's weightlifting if he's ever going to lift that 150 pounds there's not much time left for family life. Mm. Would you be happier if you didn't do any more? Yes, quite honestly, yeah. Mm. Would you try and persuade him to give up, do you think? No, because, you know, it, there'd be no point really, because I know he wouldn't now, he's the sort of person, you know, carry it through, you know, come what may, so I'd be wasting my time really. Come in, referee's on. That's it. Good, good. You nearly sure. Sorry, right? yeah. good. He trains twice a week with Tally Ho Kay, still learning the basic holds like the full Nelson, and gradually he learns to dish out the treatment as well as take it. That's it. That's good. 
That's good. Go on, then. You can put what you want on, then. You've got me trapped. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's OK. Don't worry about it. I can take you straight over top if I want, but I'll not do. Well, we say every wrestler dreads a certain hold, and the thing I dread more than anything else is a slam. You know, I... Put you down. You're held upside down for a few seconds, and those few seconds seem like hours. Then eventually, you feel yourself going down very hard, and the only thing you've got in your head is feet down, feet down. I put you up. Put you down. Your wind goes, for one thing. You can't breathe. There's no way you can breathe after you've been slammed. And especially the first few times, it felt as though your ribs were just shattering. You know those cartoons like Tom and Jerry where the ribs shattered? It really felt like that. And I couldn't really get up the first time you did it. Um, you're almost paralysed. OK, and then I lift you up. Uh, slam you down. Yeah. OK? Right, right, come on. Head up. Right, OK, we'll not do another. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure? No. <laughs> One of the worst things from the spectator point of view is, is posting. That looks horrendous. H have you tried that yet? Yeah, I've been posted. Uh, it is bad. It's very bad. Get out there. That's it. You're thrown against the post. Now, if you try and avoid the post, uh, you can meet with the most dreadful accident. Your legs can come either side of the post, for instance. Uh, you, could f you could fall out of the ring. So when you're going to get posted, there's only one thing to do. Go at it, turn in on it, and just bash it with your back. <laughs> and that is better than... Do those hooks really go in, do they? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. The pad... I mean, there is padding. <laughs> but believe me, I, you don't think of the padding when you feel like three iron bars sticking in your back. Right, I've got you down there. I've got... That's it. Get up, lad. Get up. OK, don't worry about it. He's not been on the receiving end all the time. He's had his brief moments of glory. I managed to get him in a full Nelson as well because um, it's a matter of catching him off his balance. You see, I know what to do. I know, I know what the moves are. But it's difficult getting your man off balance so that you can actually carry out those moves and holds. That's, that's a difficult But it's thing. a good moment when you get him, is it? Oh, yeah, when I've got him in that full Nelson, I'm king of the world. <laughs> right. Ah, and yes! That were better, they're OK, don't worry about bloody head. Hurting, if you're gonna do it, do it. I don't want my head ripping off. Two months to go, and Crabtree wants to see Keith in action. He's going to ask him to fight for real, and top referee Joe Durazio will make sure Keith sticks to the rules. Most people think that wrestling's fixed. They'd be surprised to hear there are any rules. If, if it's fixed, nobody's told me. You know, I, I wish... You know, we've spent so much time in hospital, wrestlers, you know, I could go, I could give you a list, you know. They spend so much time in hospital and being injured and this broken and that broken that it would never happen. It's never going to happen to you. You are never going to get cauliflower ears sitting there, are you? Now, well, I might get one tonight, you see? Because There's an element of showmanship, though, in wrestling, isn't there? The showmanship in wrestling, <clears throat> as in football, I mean, you think of any footballer you like, I mean, we've got some good showmen in football, but, but they don't employ that showmanship to an extent where it's going to cost them a match. Anything you want to know, Keith? Not really, I, I accept uh, if I'm in a situation where I'm going to have to submit. Yeah. What, how do you submit? Because well, I'll tell you, you whatever yeah. you do, don't wait and decide about it. If you're in a position where you're going to submit, <laughs> submit, scream, don't be ashamed. People have done it before you, and if we do it after you, say yes, submit, yes, yes. And that's it, bang on the mat. I know what you yeah. mean, I shall be there. He's fighting his trainer, Tally Ho Kay. For this test, they're no longer the best of friends. They've got to be the worst of enemies. Crabtree expects Keith to survive four rounds. I've got two or three basic moves in my mind, and I'm just going to think of them and nothing else. I'm not going to think of anything else. Are you nervous? Mm -hmm. Are you frightened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you panicking? No, I'm not panicking. In a quiet way, I am, but I haven't gone to pieces yet. Clear the ring. <sighs> Round one. Keith starts well. He gets Kay in a standing full Nelson. But Keith hasn't got the strength to keep him there. K 
Kay is soon back on top. Before Keith even knows what's happened, he's got him in a single leg Boston with an armbar. Oh, it's a submission hold. <laughs> 